Wasn't that pretty fun, huh? So I'm making a live action comedy sci-fi short film and that's what this was made for. I made it for a GoFundMe video to have like a tangible thing to show people. If you want to go to the link in the description to click the GoFundMe and donate, that would be actually amazing. It's about a predictable couple who spice things up in their relationship by faking an alien abduction. It's called Abduction Production. So if you can please support the short film, that would be amazing. Uh, go watch the GoFundMe video. I worked hard on it. So the first thing was the idea. The idea was to have an alien, you know, UFO hit like a basketball-sized Earth, and it's like, goo, 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 and then it, you know, crashes through it like plastic, and I thought that was funny. So what I needed was a Earth model and a UFO model. So the UFO model... What I did was I went on to Sketchfab and I downloaded a 3D model set of kitchen supplies, bowls, plates, and pans. And what I did was I just kit bashed bowls, pans, and plates, uh, and can lids to make the base of the UFO. And the reason why I did it like that was because I wanted it to seem as if it was built from hand, like it was just thrown together from random shit around the house and then hot glued together. And I added little hot glue seams around the edge like little bumps by just adding like a little ring around the seams where it would be hot glued and adding a solidify to that and then adding a displace on top of that to make it look like you know little hot glue marks around it um, and I did that at the contact area points which gave this this nice sheen when like the sun hit it right so I actually really dug that look now, the materials were pretty simple. I just went on textures.com, found some dirty, grungy, like fingerprinty kind of metal, threw that into the roughness, made sure the metallic was all the way up to make a really dirty looking uh, UFO because I wanted it, again, to feel like it was small and it was like spray painted and like fingerprints were on it, like a, a human created this UFO. The Earth model was pretty simple. It was just a sphere, and then online you can just find the Earth textures everywhere. They're everywhere. Everybody likes putting the Earth in their films, so just you can look it up and find it. It was pretty easy. The one thing that I did want was this nice glow around it, like this atmospheric glow around the Earth. That was just a Fresnel texture that was used as a mask for an emission texture and a transparent um, texture. So basically, the emission was just over the edge of the earth, and the transparent was in the middle. I used a color ramp as well to uh, dial in the Fresnel as well. So then I went along and animated it, which I am not, I do not consider myself an animator. I consider myself uh, a generalist, the most general generalist ever that can do everything, but not that good. So what I did was I animated it and I used the graph editor and blender and just animated it bouncing and, you know, you know, just kind of like eyeing what it kind of looked like. And the nice thing about it was the animation was kind of the same when it was like kept hitting the side of the earth. I kind of just duplicated those animations and then just duplicated it over and then just scaled it down and messed with it a little bit more to make it look correct. Um, so it was actually kind of simple to animate. And because it's just an object and it's not like doesn't have that many intricate things on it, it was actually fairly simple to uh, animate. But the timing had to be right. And that was the longest part of it was just timing it out using the dope sheet editor and just kind of getting that right and getting the timing, like comedic timing there, because that's the hardest part about animating. I think the key thing was the secondary animation of the earth, like bouncing back. And once I added that, it everything just felt like it had weight and it was really there and tangible and you could touch it. Um, and that was really nice. Now for the earth exploding, shattering, 
that was just using a Blender add-on that you have to enable uh, called Cell Fracture. You take the object that you want to shatter and then you shattered it. One way that I made it look more realistic is have a large fracture over everything where there's big pieces and then where you know the thing's going to crash into, like the contact, you know that those are going to be smaller pieces because it's breaking through. So what I did was I just took those larger pieces where, you know, the UFO would be crashing through and then I actually self-fractured those and I um, enabled physics on all of them and... I had two separate Earths, one that wasn't shattered and then one that was. Basically, I animated the viewport and the rendered view to pop on right when the UFO hits the Earth. So it goes from a regular sphere and then right when it hits the Earth, it transforms. So then I started to light it and I just put the sun behind it, you know, getting a nice backlight uh, to the side. And this is where I had a problem because the Fresnel of the atmosphere around the Earth showed up on the shadow side of the Earth, and that just doesn't make any sense. I tried to figure out how to do this, like using shadow ray tracing and stuff like that, but because I was rendering with Eevee, because this is a, such a long, like a 900 frame, you know, thing, I just decided to say, you know, fuck it, let's just put a gradient ramp on there to mask out the Fresnel into the shadow. That is the dirtiest way of doing that. Um, I wouldn't suggest doing that, but it works, so, like, who cares? So then uh, the final touch was adding the stars in the background, and I just went on something called unsplash.com, downloaded a, a nice stylistic one, threw it in the background on a plane, and then I rendered it out in Eevee. And luckily, I could render an Eevee for this scene because it was like a stylistic, old-timey thing. So it didn't have to have like the correct global illumination like Cycles does. And it looks beautiful, Cycles. But it, it didn't need to have any of that. And it, it's good because this animated sequence is a lot of frames, like 700 frames. So anytime I get to render an Eevee is a good time because I can just, you know, let it render. And it's like a second per frame instead of, you know, 30 seconds and... You know, that difference doesn't seem that big at first, but that is a huge difference when rendering out large animated sequences like this. So then I threw that into Premiere. I didn't throw it into After Effects this time because I didn't need to. I can just throw it into Premiere, all the stuff Premiere has. So I threw it into Premiere, uh, went into Lumetri, color graded it a bit, um, added some curves and desaturated it all the way down, obviously, to make it look black and white. Then I added Ezra Cohen's 35 millimeter grain and his eight millimeter grain on top of it. If you don't know who Ezra Cohen is, he has these like awesome tools for graphic artists. I own uh, a couple of his products, like uh, the CRT fonts, which are really cool and other things like that. So check him out if you want some cool stuff. And the last thing and the most important thing is the sound effects because before it really wasn't funny. It, you know, you could see it and you could imagine it, but it, it wasn't funny until you add those sound effects in. You needed to add that sound effects. And I knew I wanted like this big bucket sound. And the thing that I use for sound effects all the time is something called Soundly. Soundly is freaking great. If you, like, I, I, I have a subscription to it and it's just a library of sounds, but it's not on a web browser or anything. It's in this application on your computer where you can drag the section of a sound. You can search for audio, drag the section of the sound that you want and drag it into Premiere or Audition or whatever you're using. But it doesn't have every sound. It had some UFO sound effects, but it, you know, wasn't tailored towards this specific thing. I brought the video into FL Studio and then I used a synthesizer with an arpeggiator and then I just kind of played notes to kind of like make it feel like the UFO. And then my roommate suggested if we should add little alien, you know, voices. And that's really what sells it. I didn't even think of it before, but he suggested it. And I was like, yes, obviously. So me and him, we recorded some audio. I distorted the crap out of it, added flangers and uh, reverb and pitch effects to make our voices sound like little tiny aliens in a, in a spaceship. And that's really the key to making this shot work. All in all, I'm so happy how the product came out. Thanks all for watching uh, this video and be sure to hit the, the, the bell, I guess, and subscribe or do whatever you want. I don't, I don't actually care.